Steve Lillis, um, just had the press conference for uh, July 11th, Turbo. Um, Terry Flanagan going to be headlining for a world title fight. Uh, what do you make of the cards? It's, it's a fantastic stack card um, that Terry's headlining that we've got live on Box Nation. Terry against Jose Cepeda. It's a genuine world title fight. And what a tough ask it is, though, for Terry. And he, he knows that. I mean, they, 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 their heart's set, I think, on fighting the winner of um, Ray Beltran and yeah. Takahiro Heo and I think they expected that to be Beltran mm. Beltran won the fight but didn't make the weight and then subsequently last week he failed a, a, te- a diuretic mm. test so he even, even failed to make the weight when he was taking stuff to get down weight so now it's a Peter you know on paper he looks he looks a tough tough proposition mm. I think it's 23 and 0 tw- 20 knockouts um so it's, it's all to do. But you know what? They're not invincible, these unbeaten guys that come over. I remember an American light heavyweight a few years ago come over and fought Clinton Woods in a world mm. title eliminator, Rico Hoy. I think he was about 19 and 0 with 16 or 17 KOs. Mm. And guess what happened there? Clinton whacked him out in five rounds. So, mm. look, you know, you, you look at the record, you know, there's a lot of one round wins, two round wins. Um, but it's not mission impossible at all. And also, this guy's never done. He's only been below 140 mm. pounds twice in his, in his life, so he's very lucky. I don't, there's no doubt in his ability. He's lucky to have the WBO ranking, yeah. but um, it's a fantastic fight, 50-50 fight. And what, but if you're gonna if you're gonna fight for a world title, we'll have the satisfaction of beating a great fight, you know, another, another great fighter for it, and that's what Terry's up against. No, definitely, and Terry's got home advantage. It's right on his doorstep, uh, the couldn't, venue as well. It couldn't be more on his doorstep. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, you live in Manchester mm. and coach to the velodrome. Mm. It's literally a ten-minute walk. Yeah. You know, you won't even need a cab or anything. So, you know, look, the home advantage is massive. I know Terry mm. said he wouldn't have minded fighting in Las Vegas or mm. America for the title, but. You know, he can stay at home. He's got his own home comforts. With his, you know, he likes being home with his wife and young son. Yeah. He's got his gym on his doorstep. Every, you know, those sort of comforts that sometimes they can be underestimated than having to fly to America two weeks early mm-hmm. where you're living in a hotel room, you're adapting to a time difference. You know, you've got to watch your food, whereas you totally trust of what you're being cooked at home. It, it, home advantage is, is massive in world title fights. No, definitely. And, of course, it's uh, ten years on since uh, certain Ricky Hatton won his first world title. So what a way to celebrate as well. Oh, it'd be fantastic that Manchester has another world champion ten years on. And, you know, like Ricky, you're possibly an underdog on the night. Um, I'm sure Ricky will be speaking to Terry before the fight. Um, and you know that that would be in the back of Terry's mind. Also, they're both Manchester City fans yeah. as well, so there's a lot of identity there. So um, yeah, that as well. You know, ten years on Manchester to have another world champion be fantastic. I mean, Scott Quigg has won a world mm. title since then, but he he's a Berry fighter. Yeah. Where you know we can quit as great at Manchester, <laughs> I suppose, really. But um, you know. It, Terry to win it in Manchester on his doorstep would be fantastic and who knows if he wins this you know the fan base could grow mm. and like Ricky he could be headlining events at Manchester Arena no, definitely. and for Manchester for the city uh, being 10 years on the week after Anthony Crawler's uh, fighting for a world title as well but you know so. what if Anthony won that fight it would be fantastic you know you go around boxing and you know you're around it all the time and you, you, you rarely hear someone who anybody in the industry has mm. a bad word to say about whatever side of the fence they work for yeah. or, or, or anything. You can't have a bad word against Anthony Crawler. He's one of the, the loveliest fella, <laughs> fellas you'll ever meet in boxing. You know, that, that sounds a cliche, but in this case, you know, it, it, it really is so true. Yeah. Darlies Perez, you know, like Terry Flanagan's got, it's another big ask yeah. to, to win the fight. But... You, think you, you can't go in the water without getting wet. No. Um, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, one thing for sure, Anthony's preparation, there won't be no, no stone unturned mm. getting ready there at Joe Gallagher's gym. And what a fairy tale if Manchester had two world champions yeah. at the same weight class within the week. And I'm sure if Anthony if Crawler won ease, the natural fight for him would be to go and fight um, Derry Matthews, the yeah. WBA interim champion. I'm sure that, that's the fight um, Derry will be pushing for as, you know, technically the mandatory contender. Yeah. That would be a fantastic fight, as would Derry against Darlies Perez. But, mm. but uh, look, both ter- ter- Terry and Anthony both have a lot to do to win, but it's, it's not, they're, not, they're not tasks that are totally beyond them. Mm. No, for sure. And... Two other guys on the top table today were Paul Butler and Jack Catterall. What can we expect from uh, them come July 11th? Their opponents haven't been announced yet. Yeah, well, Jack Catterall's getting harder and harder to match mm. up, Gavra. I mean, he's been out in America sparring with Floyd Mayweather, doing like mad eight minute rounds sometimes. Mm. And, and, you know, Canelo Alvarez, he's been with. I think he preferred Alvarez's camp. It was a lot more peaceful. He likes mm. a quiet camp himself. 
Um, you know, he's my sub at this stage, though he's got his world ranking with the WBO for all the European and fighting for intercontinental belts. He's, he's very much still kid glove stage. You know, we've got to remember with Jack, we're, we're all getting excited about him. But he's only had 11 fights, he's only 21 years of age. There's so much time for Jack Hatchraw. You know, he doesn't, he, 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 just get, get him to 15 and 0, see where he is, mm. then to 20 and 0, maybe then 18 months down the line, you can maybe start thinking of his first world class yeah. opponent. But I, I'm really excited about Jack, and of course, you know, the Stalker wins made a lot of people sit up and take mm. notes, so did the Nathan Bruff win. But, you know, you, I, I, I'm told there's things he does in the gym he still isn't doing in the ring. So mm. when, when he is the finished article, I, I think he'll be, he'll be a complete fighter. And, of course, you know, Paul Butler's on the bill and mm. Terry Flanagan's fighting for a world title and he's trying to get back yeah. in contention. Look, let, let's be honest, he's just come off a really heavy defeat against Zelane Tetti. So mm. I don't think we can be expecting him to have, you know, fight in yeah. King Kong straight away. Um, this is more about him getting back, showing that the confidence is still there. He's convinced he's lost no confidence from the loss to Zelani mm. Tete, and I'm, I'm sure he can come. But I think that the, the, the aim for him this year is maybe a fight against Jamie Connellan mm. towards the back end of this year, which will virtually be a world title eliminator. Yeah. I think Jamie's highly ranked by the WBO. I'm sure Paul won't be far from mm. those rankings when the next ones come out, unless he's not already in them. And that would be the fight for him, I think, later this year. That would be a fantastic English versus Ireland fight. And of course, we've got Jamie Conlon fights on the 4th of yeah, July before, in Dublin. Yeah. So there's a lot to look forward to the next few months um, um, on, on all channels, but particularly Box Nation. Um, boxing, people going about boxing, struggling, but we, we're seeing at the moment, we saw at the weekend mm. a massive bill. Um, in London, the boxing is, is, is on a roll and doing great things at the moment, despite what the, 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 you know, the naysayers want us to know and what they uh, want us to believe. No, definitely. And in terms of uh, someone that's going to be on the card on July 11th but wasn't here today, uh, Billy Joe Saunders, um, what can we expect from him and what, what's set for him for after July 11th? Well, Will it be Eubank Jr. again? Well, Will it be Andy be, Lee? I don't know. I mean, the, the Eubank Jr. fight, I've just seen some quotes from Frank mm. Warren last week, and that, as of now, it seems dead in the yeah. water, but you know, look, you're around boxing all your life. Mm. You never say never in boxing, yeah. do you? So, whether that fight can be, you know, regurgitated, I don't know. Mm. I, I think, though, he'll be moving on to the Andy Lee fight. Yeah. I think when he fights in Manchester, it'll be more a lot of frustration to let out because he'll be looking forward to the Eubank rematch and a big payday where yeah. he's not, you know, that, that, that's gone. So, I think he'll, 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 he'll have you know, a solid test mm. in, in Manchester and then he'll go on to the Andy Lee fight in in the autumn I guess no, definitely and you were out uh, last week uh, in New, uh, New, New York, York for the Khan uh, Algeri fight uh, what did you make of uh, Amir Khan's performance that night you know what I think some of the stick Amir Khan gets is, is just ridiculous I saw mm. some of it on Twitter at the weekend it, it's just madness there's mm. a hell of a lot of jealousy around Amir and you know I'm, I'm not, he doesn't need me to be an apologist for him mm. but you know what he, he went to America the other night and he pulled off a really good win. Uh, I think it was what he had to do in that fight. Look, the job, the, the, the man who emerges with all the credit is Chris Algieri and his mm. trainer, John David Jackson. The job John David Jackson has done with him, in, geez, changed him as a fighter within two months. Yeah. He totally didn't fight anything like the style anyone expected. If any, did, you, did you tell me, did anyone write that or say in an interview, that's how Algieri was going to fight? No. no. And what he had to do, Amir Khan, was make the necessary yeah. adjustments. Maybe it wasn't his greatest performance. There was a bit, it shades, you know, someone pointed out to me of the Julio Diaz fight mm -hmm. without the knockdown in there it is a fair analogy. But you know what? When it looked like it might, I think it was one stage in the fight, um, I'd have to look at my notes again, yeah. um, I had Algeria point ahead, I think after seven or eight rounds. Mm -hmm. But Amir made the adjustments, he came home and won. I think the 117, 111 cards were... were, 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 were totally out of sync. Mm. I did 1-1-5, one, 1-1-3 one, 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 like one of the judges but I don't think you can doubt that he deserved the win and you know I do hope he gets the Mayweather fight. I'm not mm. for one second saying that Amit Khan's going to beat Floyd Mayweather. Mm. Mayweather seems to find a way to win yeah. but he's got the style to trouble Mayweather, mm. Mayweather and make him think and it could be a lot more interesting fight than what we've seen in a lot of Mayweather fights recently. You know we see Mayweather win a fight 1-1-6, 1-1-2 against Medina and people are crying for rematches. He'll give him a hard, hard fight. I'm not going to say he's going to win, but if he got that fight, he'll give him a hard fight. If he doesn't get the fight, 
you know, I wonder what, what, what will be next for Amir Khan because, you know, he really needs that marquee mm. fight now. Well, you mentioned that marquee fight and if the Mayweather fight doesn't happen, Kel Brook, another good performance hey, over the weekend. Hey, you can't take away from Kel's performance of the weekend. You know, he's getting mm. better. Hey, if there's nothing else out there, you know, I know, look, you know, look, Eddie's saying that, you know, he's scared of him, scared of losing. He's, um, he's re- scared of losing to Kel Brook, but... I can see, you know, I can't agree with a lot of Eddie's statement there the other day, mm. Eddie Hearn I'm referring to, but we're already, I think any fight that's scared of losing yeah. um, a record, you know, and of course he's scared, you know, he's not scared of Kel Brook, but, you know, I don't think he's scared of him. Yeah, maybe he's scared of losing to, to Kel Brook, but, you know, you should be scared of losing to anybody. Mm. You should have to go into the ring with that fear of losing. Yeah. And that's what, you know, that's the only thing he's scared of, the fear of losing to his... Mm. To anybody, look. If the money's right, that's the fight. If it, if Mayweather doesn't happen, I'd look at someone like Broner. Mm. The money, I think that's a stole that's absolutely made for him. It's a, I'd have my life on on Amir beating him. Mm. If that doesn't happen, I'll see what the money is for for um, Brook later mm. this year and, and go for that. No, definitely. Oh, well, thank you so much for your time, Steve. Pleasure. And uh, look forward to seeing more of you on uh, Box Nation. Yep, yeah, pleasure. For any time, all the best to Robert and all the seconds out. Thank you so much.